and a happy Sabbath morning to you, St. Mark's Church family and friends and guests. Delighted that you could join me this morning in God's Word. As we continue with the New Beginning series that I started a few weeks ago, looking, of course, at the new beginning that took place in the life of one of the first followers of Jesus, a man by the name of Simon the Fisherman. Before we begin, I'd like you to join me in prayer. Thank you, God, for this story of faith. The story of how you came to a man named Simon. How you were faithful to him and helped shape and nurture him, Lord, to come to you. And to follow you. As we share this story together, Lord, we know that our story connects with this story. And we can perhaps see elements of Peter in ourselves and our own walk. Help us to be attentive, dear, attentive, dear God, to those moments in our own lives. Or those certain aspects maybe of our own character and personality that we see in Peter. And how you still used him. And how you can use us today as your disciples to reach others. To make a difference for Christ in this world. Father, I ask in Jesus' name, amen. children's director here at St. Mark's United Methodist Church. It's a joy to have you joining with us in worship and I want to take this time to go ahead and thank all the Vacation Bible School volunteers that are coming and preparing to help us have an awesome week at Vacation Bible School. So if you're at home, go ahead and give all our Vacation Bible School volunteers a round of applause. We're so excited for all of them and we're just really blessed to have them be a part of our team. So in preparation for Vacation Bible School, if you aren't able to join us, or if you are, I want to get you kind of prepared for what our week's going to look like. We're going to be talking about God's creation, celebrating all the wonderful things in nature, and also learning how to be good caretakers of that. So with that said, I am going to show you one of my most awesome favorite 
like little tricks that I learned when I was at camp. And this is called a bendo. Now, there's a lot of like technique that goes into a bendo. So I'm gonna show you how it goes, all right? So here it goes. I'm walking around and all of a sudden, what's that I see? Oh my goodness, a piece of trash. What do we do, what do we do? We know that trash is not good for our environment. Some litter, so this is what we do, a bendo, all right? So you walk, you spot it, get in your target. Oh, my technique was a little off there. We pick it up and then boom, we find a trash can. Everybody see the trash cans over there? And then we properly dispose of our trash. Do you guys wanna see that again? Maybe like in slow motion? All right, here it goes. We got our back up. <laughs> Here we go, in slow motion. And the crowd goes wild, woo! Yes, all right, so the cool thing about bendos is anybody anywhere can do it. So if you guys are around seeing some trash on the ground, you too can do a bendo. All right, with that said, let's pray. Father, we are so grateful for all the Vacation Bible School volunteers that are coming to help us out. Um, we're so grateful for their leadership and their kindness and their time. We are also so grateful that we have the power to clean up and take care of your creation. Father, we just remember that we have to do our part and it's important and it's even fun. It's good to clean up the world. So in your name we pray, amen. Our scripture this morning is from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 16, verses 13 through 19. Now when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, Some say John the Baptist, but others Elijah, and still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loose in heaven. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You can't help but love Simon. When we first hear about Simon, Jesus had just heard about King Herod arresting John the Baptist. And Jesus then decides to go to Capernaum by the sea. It's there he meets these two fishermen who are tending their nets. It's there that we meet a man named Simon and his brother Andrew. We also hear Jesus use these words as he goes into Capernaum. Repent for the kingdom of heaven is near. Now, when we look at the word repent, repentance means to recognize, first of all, your shortcomings, that, 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 that you're flawed, to recognize specific flaws in your own character, and to recognize that there is one who can help you to turn around, to correct those flaws, to be, to be healed from them. To be healed from those areas that we've missed the mark. And that's something that Simon was about to do. And that's something we are invited to do through Jesus. In a relationship with Jesus and his word. But let's look at portions of the life of Peter. And how God transformed this, this impetuous, brash, loud, obnoxious man into a bold, caring crusader for Jesus. Simon lived in the port city of Capernaum, 
with his brother. They were, as many were that lived in that particular area, uh, fishermen who made a living selling fish, catching and selling fish. Now, if you just go by Matthew's gospel in, in explaining or giving a history of the life of Peter or Simon, you will be disappointed because si Matthew just cuts to the chase. So Jesus called him and he followed him, along with his brother. And that's basically all Matthew will tell you about the early years. But if you flip over to Luke chapter 5, you get a vivid detail about who this man was and how, how he accepted the call of Jesus in his own life. I don't want to share that story with you because I find it to be an amazing story. Um, as Luke tells the story in chapter 5, Jesus was standing beside the lake of Gennesaret when crowds began to press in him. He's preaching and teaching and, and, and the crowds become so enormous. He has nowhere else to go. He's being pushed gradually into the lake. And so he sees a boat nearby and, and Simon is who was tending the nets, he asked Simon if he could get into the boat and if Simon would not mind casting out or taking the, taking the boat out into the water a little ways to give him room to speak to the people. And, and Simon does so. He, he obliges Jesus, put, get, lets him get on, to, on the boat with him, and, and then Jesus begins to teach and preach. And of course, Simon hears the, the words that Jesus is preaching. We can only assume he's talking about repentance. For the kingdom of God is near. To turning your life around. And obviously that word resonated with Peter because. After that Jesus mentioned to Peter noticing he had not caught anything. Said to Simon, Simon let's go out a little bit further. Let's go deeper into the water. And cast your nets, nets one more time. And of course, Simon says, we've been out of here all night. We are, we are exhausted. But then he says this, if, if you say so, I'll do it. And so he, that's what he does. He lowers the nets along with the other fishermen. And they have so great a catch that the nets begin to rip. The, uh, in some accounts, the boat begins to sink. They, had, they need help. They have to call other boats to help them bring in the fish. And it was at that moment Simon realizes, hey, this Jesus guy not only knows the scriptures, now he's not only a giving prophetic word, this man is of God. And if he's calling us to repent, to recognize our shortcomings. It suddenly dawns on. Simon. In order for him to get closer to God. What he needs to do. And so he turns to Jesus. And he says my Lord. Please. Go away from me. I am an unclean man. I am flawed. And I am a sinful man. And then Jesus replies to Simon and says, don't be afraid. I want you to come with me and I want you not to fish for fish anymore, but fish for people. Do you see the beginning of the new beginning that is taking place in the life of Simon when he recognizes his shortcomings? First of all, I'm an unclean man. I imagine when Jesus invited them to recognize and to turn around. That resonated with him. You know, even in Peter's doubts, the scripture said he is moved by Jesus to throw out the nets one more time. Not only that, he leaves everything and believes in this man so much and believes in God so much that he gives up everything to follow him. 
along with his brother Andrew. Nine others will follow, or ten others. He dropped everything, their very identities as fishermen, and they began a beautiful journey with Jesus. Now, let me just clarify. Simon had a long way to go in order to become Peter the Rock. Jesus loved the man he saw before him, the man he was, and he saw the man he could, he could become. As, as the old saying goes, God accepts, accepts us for who we are, but he loves us too much to keep us that way. I like that. He calls Simon knowing full well that he was a flawed man. But he saw a man whose heart was, was open to change. And wanting to change. Yes, Simon was unpredictable. He, he was faithful at one minute and then unfaithful the next. He struggled most of his journey with Jesus. As, as that brash, impulsive guy. Often speaking out of turn and acting on some things without giving much thought to them about the consequences. He doesn't quite get who Jesus is. Even though he, he knows he's the special guy. And yet gave up everything to follow like they all did. I want to share a few more stories from Peter's life that, that helped shape him, I think. Uh, to be and mold him and, and to refine him. You recall when, when Jesus was walking on water towards the disciples one day. We recall that uh, it was that impetuous Peter. Not the others who stood up and said, let me come out to you. And Peter actually began to walk on water. He had faith and he was walking on water. But then the storm came up and, and the wind or the wind blew the water and it started lapping up on him. He became frightened, lost faith, and he began to sink. Which was a teaching lesson for him as Jesus lifted him up out of the water and said, oh, Simon. Oh, you have little faith. Impetuous Peter, yet full of love for Jesus. We recall another story. Peter wants to build tents for Jesus on the Mount of Transfiguration as, as Jesus is standing there with Elijah and Moses. Uh, rather than come down uh, from the mountain, he wants to play it safe up in the mountaintop. Let's just stay up here because that's where God is and Let's just stay up here. Let's don't go back down. Let's stay up here. Let's pitch tents and stay here for a long time. And he knows he can't do that. Immediately, God interrupts and says in a loud voice to Peter and to all of them there that day. This is my beloved son. And then he says, listen to him. If that wasn't a faith changing moment. For Peter, I don't know what would be a confirmation of who this man is. The Son of God. But then again, as he grows in faith one minute, the very next minute, what do we see him doing? Flawed Peter once again. He tries and prevents Jesus from going to Jerusalem after Jesus just tells him, the chief priests and elders will arrest me and put me to death. He can't accept that. And he says to Jesus, you will not go to Jerusalem. Even after he told him that he would die and rise again, Peter said, no, Jesus, that can't happen to you. That doesn't happen to Messiah. Messiah is supposed to triumph, not die. And then Jesus replies to him, get behind me. You're acting like the devil. The devil's working through you, Simon. You're thinking as men think, not God. And then the last scene before the crucifixion, they're enjoying one last meal together. And Jesus says to them, you will all turn away and betray me. And here is that impetuous Peter once again saying, even if the rest of them 
deny you. I will never deny you. I will die with you if I need to. I will never betray you. As bold as he was at that particular moment, we know how that turned out, don't we, church? Jesus knew as well. And Jesus looked at him and said, before the cock crows three times, you will deny me three times that you even knew me. You will all turn away. And sure enough, it happened as Jesus said. They all became frightened. So the story goes that Peter, who was called the rock, the steadfast, the immovable, wept bitterly. And when Jesus was crucified on that cross, he ran away in fear and hid in an upper room with the fellow disciples for fear of the Jewish leaders. But he loves Jesus. Let's don't deny that. His heart is, 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 is in it. But once again, at times, his actions betray him when it's put to the greatest test. God used those moments in his life. God used those moments in Peter's life to shape him, to make him that immovable, steadfast, bold follower and eventual leader of the Christian movement. You know, fast forward, at the resur at the, after the resurrection, we see a new Peter, don't we? Jesus comes to the upper room and shows, the, shows his resurrected self, pours the Holy Spirit upon them, and that, that impulsive, um, unpredictable Peter all of a sudden becomes, and scared Peter at the same time, who is afraid, becomes emboldened and empowered to be a dynamic disciple of Jesus Christ. This, this hot-headed, unschooled man spoke with care and boldness to crowds of thousands, winning thousands to, Christ, to the Christian faith. He would spend over the next 30 years giving his life on behalf of this man he met by the seashore, this man that he put his, that he put his faith in, this man who would be God in human flesh, who came to save the world. He traveled all over the place, uh, sharing the message of, of Christ's love. He endured persecution, imprisonment, and ultimately put to death, showing his maturity by living a spirit-led life in Christ. Peter made this statement in, 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 in 1 Peter. He says, like newborn babies crave spiritual milk. So that by it you may grow up in your salvation now that you have tasted that the Lord is good. Because the more and more milk that we receive, we soon start moving from milk to solids and, and maturing in that faith. As we are tested along the way in faith. And the good news of the being tested, even though we're tested in, along this line, God never leaves us. But uses even those times of suffering, I believe, as, as opportunities for us to, to grow in our faith and our relationship with God. So that we can be there for others going through difficulties as well. And see them through their own times of suffering. You see, Peter recognized, I believe, that time spent with Jesus should produce maturity in the believer's relationship as it did for him. And this can be evidenced by, by one's obedience to God's word. And as a result of that, we bear fruit. As we are consistently staying in the word of God, praying to God, asking for God's guidance and direction through the power of the Holy Spirit. God shows God is already there, but we are we're so in tune with God. We can't help but be transformed by those words and also by the influence of Christ minded people in our lives who challenge us and help us to grow and shape us in the faith as we live 
out our day-to-day -day existence as faithful followers. Inconsistent though we can be at times. Friends, I pray for St. Mark's Church and all peoples that accept Jesus that with each passing day that we may grow in our understanding of Christ continuously and that as a result of that growth, our lives will be strengthened so that God could use us fully in ministry, just like Peter. Because you see, friends, when you follow somebody, you imitate them. Peter went... Uh, Behind Jesus, he shadowed with him, seeking to learn and be like Jesus in all his ways. He fell a lot. He got back up. Jesus was there with him all the way, helping him to learn and to grow. And even when he ultimately betrayed him and went the other way, Jesus came back to him to lift him up again. But once you and I decide to make Jesus the Lord of our lives, to follow him, Jesus becomes our identity. We become Christ followers. This identity identifies everything or affects everything that we do in life. We're known by a new name and that name is Christian. I'm a Christian who happens to be a pastor. You are a, teach, a Christian who happens, just so happens to be a school teacher or a principal or guidance counselor or a nurse. Or maybe retired from doing other jobs, but still Christian to find you. I am so grateful for my identity in Christ. That God calls me one of his own. I am just as thankful that he forgives me time and time again of many times that I am impulsive, perhaps brash, but love the Lord with all my heart. That he forgives me when I screw up. As stated before, as I said a few minutes ago, our, our relationship with Jesus should mature us when we stay with Christ in his word and stay with people. Who will challenge us and help us to grow and nurture us. We should gain strength in, in, as, in being with people. So that we can combat the sufferings and, and the difficulties of this world. And the challenges that it presents. So that we in turn can be that. Be Christ's voice for others in the world. To help them when they're sinking. To help them when they make bad choices. To lift them up. Just as Christ has done for us. I love the writings of Adam Hamilton. And I want to share this from a blog that he wrote. He says, while Simon Peter's shortcomings are clearly on display in the Gospels. So also are his courage. His determination. His longing to follow Jesus even if it cost him his life. The early church knew how his story ended after his dramatic denial of Jesus on the night he was arrested. Following his resurrection and ascension, Peter would in fact become that rock upon the church was built. He would carry his own cross to follow Jesus. And while in Peter's flaws, Christians might see themselves, they might also see themselves in the moments of Peter's courage, and faithfulness and ultimately they might see in him a picture of what they might aspire to be when empowered and led by the spirit friends i close with this word from acts 4 13 when a when peter the rock stands before the elders and the chief priests and the scribes and rulers acts 4 13 and when they, the rulers, elders, and scribes, saw the boldness of Peter and John and realized that they were uneducated, ordinary men, they were amazed and recognized them as companions of Christ. And when they saw the signs and wonders done through these men as they cured a man and healed him, 
they were left speechless. They had nothing else to say. Friends, as we walk by faith, as we turn and return our lives to Jesus Christ, giving him our shortcomings and letting the word of God and, 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 and the church of Jesus Christ through the power of the Spirit nurture us, may we experience that transformation and new beginning that Peter experienced as he gave his life and surrendered his whole being to Christ. Amen.